They cover, on average, two-thirds of the Earth's surface, but scientists still understand precious little about clouds, and most climatologists believe they hold the key to unlocking the mysteries of climate change. A new study was just launched to explore them, and Jeff Glor was invited along for an up-close look. It's the dead of night on the Caribbean island of Barbados. But for the crew of NOAA's Orion P-3 aircraft, Let's start the, engines and, uh, get on, go. the day is just getting started. All right, I do have MMR up. This hurricane hunter usually flies into monster storms to learn how they grow. Let's go ahead and turn and start climbing. On this night, we watched as the team dropped remote sensors, almost 60 of them over eight hours. I'm going to be hearing that sound of my sleep. To gather scientific data about a subject that only becomes visible with the rising sun. So where we want to be is just below cloud base. It looks like there's some cells lining up. The white puffy cumulus clouds this tropical region is famous for may be the crucial missing puzzle piece for anyone trying to predict the rate of climate change. If we don't understand clouds, can we ever be accurate in climate modeling? No, you can't, because they're a huge part of the climate system. Eventually, it's coming out. Chris Farrell is NOAA's lead investigator for an unprecedented six-week-long field science exercise called Atomic. This is like the biggest large-scale open-air cloud laboratory on the Atlantic. You're as far east as you're going to get here, which is yeah. why Barbados is, is yeah. the spot to do this. That's right, a sweet spot for doing this kind of work. You're flooding the atmosphere with just about everything I can think of. I mean, it's, it's, it's drones. Two, one. We brought out you know, a fleet of ships and aircraft and air balloons and everything we could think of. That's the idea, is just to try to get as many different data points. Right. Clouds may live in the air, but they're created by conditions far below, on and beneath the surface of the ocean. So to fully understand them, you need a ship. How you doing? Hi, I'm Jeff. Nice to meet you. Noah has one. The Ron Brown, a state-of-the-art floating science platform. This is a heavily instrumented surfboard. Um, Dr. Elizabeth Thompson runs Ryan, the science program on board. Possessed. It's a surfboard that's taking these incredibly complicated measurements. I don't think a human would enjoy surfing on it, but the instruments do a really fine job. The issue with tropical clouds is they're really shallow, so it's really difficult for our satellites to get all of the properties of those small little clouds right. Instead of relying on satellites, Thompson and her team unleashed dozens of remote vehicles across hundreds of square miles of ocean for six full weeks. Most of the heat in the global climate system is at the equator where the sun beats down is the most strong on the ocean surface and all that heat gets has to get dissipated somewhere. Clouds are like air conditioning systems. Clouds are trying to redistribute energy. The global models that are tasked with predicting sea level rise in Florida, how hurricane strength will change in 100 years, all of that is kind of determined on how well we can predict weather in the tropics. The tropics affects everything else. Yeah, the rate at which the Earth warms is really dependent on how these clouds work, and that's why we're here. My team has instruments for measuring temperature, humidity, wind. But Thompson is not alone here. The project is multinational, involving British, French, and German scientists. So that's our most sophisticated instrument. We developed. Including Bjorn Stevens, who's been studying clouds from the Barbados Cloud Observatory for more than a decade. These sort of clouds are very interesting because they regulate Earth's energy budget quite a lot. So if you change these type of clouds a little bit, it influences the climate. And so as the climate warms, the real question is what happens to these sorts of clouds? Because if you fill it too full, it bursts too soon, right? Yeah. And if you fill it Stevens too hopes the data collected here will help climate scientists narrow yeah, yeah, down yeah. the wide range of predictions about how much the planet will warm and how fast. Okay, I'll, I'll go launch it now, huh? Okay. Yeah. Some have forecast a worst case scenario where these clouds and the protection from sunlight they provide disappear completely as we pump more CO2 into the atmosphere. And that'll lead to more sunlight at the surface, which will enhance or increase the pace of warming. Um, but the models treat these things pretty crudely. We're here to see if we can figure out what's right. Oh, here we go. I think we're already in the cloud layer. You see clouds every day, and you don't think at what a massive role they play. Yeah, that's right. I, I'm like a guy that builds radars and flies on airplanes and tries to understand one cloud at a time. I'm just like one of the guys out there pushing that my little rock up the hill. 
You get giddy when you're talking about clouds. Yeah, I'm Mr. Cloud around here. <laughs> All of it means Barbados, typically known as a destination for sun seekers. One, two, three. Is quickly gaining fame as a place for cloud hunters, too.